Good morning, MV Kids, and welcome to another Sunday Online. Today, we're going to continue the story of Moses. Last week, we learned about how Moses was born, and his mom hid him as a baby in the creek, and he was raised by actually Pharaoh's daughter. So he was raised underneath the palace of Egypt. Now we're going to talk about what God is going to do with him. He's going to call him to really be an awesome piece, a hero for the Israelites. So the first question I have for you is, what is God like? What is his personality like? And the answer I have for you is God is holy, good, and loving. And now that is going to be something we need to think about as we think about this story. Because no matter what happens, God is good, God is holy, and God is loving. So today we're going to learn about the plagues and the Passover. So let's play a game called Launching Frogs or Flinging Frogs, okay? So if you have, by any chance, if you have a plastic frog in your house, just a small little one, go ahead and grab it and a spoon, either a plastic spoon or a real spoon. I couldn't find a frog, so I'm going to use this little bunny. This is a silly little bunny. So grab the spoon and place the frog or whatever other little tiny plastic creature you can find on the spoon. And now you're going to have a competition. Who can let it go the furthest? So you're going to mark a spot on the floor where you're all going to stand. And then everyone is going to take a turn and launch your frogs and see who can get it to go the furthest. Just like that. All right. So go ahead and pause this video and play Launching Frogs. When Pharaoh refused to obey God, God sent plagues or bad things to punish Egypt. One of the plagues was armies of frogs filling the land. Can you think of any other plagues that happened in Egypt? We'll learn about that real soon. So this week, our monthly memory verse is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And that comes from Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. So the main idea for today is that God delivered his people and proved that he is the one true God. Only God can do these amazing things that you're about to learn. So let's watch a video and listen to our story. God's people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God, and God called Moses to rescue them. So Moses and his brother Aaron went to Pharaoh. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go. But Pharaoh responded, Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Israel may not go. So God sent ten plagues to punish the Egyptians. First, God turned the water in the Nile River into blood. But Pharaoh would not let the people go. God sent frogs into Egypt. Pharaoh said, ask your God to take away the frogs, then I will let the people go. But when God removed the frogs, Pharaoh refused to let the people go. So God sent gnats into Egypt that bit the people and animals. Then God sent flies and he caused all the livestock to die. Still, Pharaoh did not let the people go. God sent boils that covered the people in Egypt, but Pharaoh's heart was hard. Not even a terrible hailstorm changed Pharaoh's mind. Locusts ate up the plants and then darkness covered the land for three days, but still, Pharaoh said no. God told Moses, I will bring one more plague after that. Pharaoh will let you go. Moses warned Pharaoh, God will go through Egypt. Every firstborn male in Egypt will die, but the Israelites will be safe. Pharaoh ignored Moses. So God told every Israelite family to kill a lamb and sprinkle its blood on the doorpost of their houses. This 
would be a special mark that God would see and pass over. No one in the Israelites' families would die. At midnight, God struck every firstborn in the land of Egypt. There was a great cry in the land of Egypt because there wasn't a house without someone dead. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. Go, he said. The Israelites were ready. A whole army of them, 600,000 men and their families, left Egypt quickly. They took bread and their animals. They asked the Egyptians for gold, silver, and clothing. The Egyptians gave them what they wanted. God led his people out of Egypt. He was preparing a place for them in a land called Canaan. For 430 years, the Israelites had been slaves in the land of Egypt. They were finally free. By his grace, God spared the Israelites from judgment by requiring the blood of a lamb. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His death was the ultimate sacrifice, and those who trust in Christ are under his saving blood and will be passed over in the final judgment. Here are some questions to think about. Who went to talk to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt? What did they ask Pharaoh? Did Pharaoh let the people go? What are the 10 plagues God sent to Egypt? What was the last and the worst plague? How did the Israelites save their kids from the last plague? What did Pharaoh finally do? Now I have some questions for our older friends. If you want, you could pause this video and discuss it as a family or even write them down in a journal. Why is Jesus called the Lamb of God? Can you make a connection from the night of the Passover to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross? Pharaoh asked, who is the Lord? How would you answer this question? God rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. How are people slaves to sin? Who is the master when you're only listening to sin? Now for our Christ connection. So every story we talk about, you know, one thing that happened a long, 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 long time ago in the Bible, and then we connect it to Jesus Christ. So by His grace, God spared the Israelites from judgment by requiring the blood of a lamb. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His death was the ultimate sacrifice, and those who trust in Christ are under His saving blood and will be passed over in the final judgment. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for the illustration of the Passover, that not only did you save the Israelites from the plagues, but you also sent us Jesus, the Lamb of God, to save us from our sins. And Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. In your name we pray, amen. All right, I have two activities for you guys today. The first one is for our younger friends, our preschool friends. So God sent plagues of insects to Egypt. That's a whole lot of insects, it's a whole lot of bugs. And they filled the skies looking like a cloud of bugs. So can you use the tip of a marker or even a paintbrush to show what it would look like to have so many bugs that you can't see. So get a piece of paper and just draw dots and pretend like those dots are bugs all over the place and see if you could make a cloud of bugs, kind of like it would have looked like. Another plague God sent was hail. Hail is a big chunks of ice falling from the sky. Ask a grown-up to put lots of ice cubes in a bowl or in a tub with some water. Play with the ice. How does it look? How does it feel? How does it smell? How does it taste? How does it sound when you rub them together? This is what hail is. It's just big clumps of ice. So now for our school age friends, I want you to play a game. So you'll need to pause this video on the instructions and one person, a grown up or an older friend, can be the one reading these instructions. So you either need to close your eyes or get a blindfold. And you have to do these things on a piece of paper, so you're gonna need a piece of paper and a pencil. 
Now, you're not allowed to look at your paper. That's the hard part, okay? So you gotta write with your eyes closed, okay? So God sent 10 plagues. Can you write the number 10? First, God turned the water in the Nile to blood. To blood. Can you draw a river on your paper? Blindfolded, don't look. Pharaoh would not let the people go, so God sent frogs. Can you draw a frog? Blindfolded. Then God sent gnats. Can you draw a fly or a gnat? Pharaoh still wouldn't let the people go because his heart was hardened. Can you draw a heart? Locusts ate up the plants. Draw a plant, no peeking. And at Passover, Israelites painted blood on their doors. Can you draw a door? Still don't look. Now take the blindfolds off and see how well you did. That's all we have for today. I will see you next week. Bye.